So today we're going to replace a Honeywell damper actuator that has gone bad. Um, first let me back up a little to the problem and how I diagnosed it. So about four years ago we had a contractor finish out our third floor attic and he tied in the HVAC with our existing uh, three ton unit which was servicing the second floor at the time. In order to do that they put in a Honeywell True Zone uh, panel that it's a HZ322 panel here which is uh, a circuit board that basically takes directions from the two thermostats uh, one on the second floor one on the third floor and translates that into directing the appropriate airflow to each floor uh, or, or possibly to both floors at the same time now we really don't use our third floor very often just when family or friends are visiting and staying overnight so our third floor thermostat really stays off most of the time a few months ago when my mom was in town uh, to stay overnight, we noticed that the second floor got really cold in the middle of the night. Now the thermostat was set to 72 overnight and it was about 68 and still blowing cold air, although it wasn't really blowing very hard, but it was it was clearly uh, blowing some cold air uh, on the second floor. So I went up to the third floor and it was pretty warm. I think the thermostat was set 73 or 74 and it was running about 77 um, and, and there was no air blowing. So clearly uh, something was wrong there. Uh, my first inclination was that the circuit board thing was malfunctioning, so I started messing with that, uh, only to discover how to cycle through a series of tests that actually fixed the problem, uh, but it, it was only temporary. Um, so let me show that real quick. So to test this thing, you run the mode button twice down to checkout, then you start hitting next, and you'll see it gives you a number of options to test different things heat, cool, fan, zone one damper um, and effectively your brackets around open so you can say closed and uh, if you go down there and actually watch it it takes a few seconds so we'll show that later but it uh, takes a few seconds to close it so you can go back and forth next zone two damper and ultimately when I was testing this I could get it to I'd go through this cycle and give it a little more time and go a couple times but go through this cycle once you go ahead and hit next a few times and check out and then uh, I guess purge override next and now you're back to square so cycling through that fixed the problem but but temporarily and, and uh, within 24 hours it would happen again so the next time it happened I went searching for the dampers so over here is the air handler on the other side and um, when I was having this problem as soon as I opened these doors I could feel how cold it was in this little space, um, tight space that is jammed in here and uh, so that was clearly a problem, I knew something was wrong so if I climb up in here and you can see it's a awfully tight space if I crawl up in here uh, so you can see there's the damper to the third floor and you can see down here there's the damper to the second floor which you can see that one's they're different kinds, this one um, has a green light on it indicating it's open obviously if it's closed and, and when I was having this problem uh, it was closed um, because the second floor was not calling for air so it was a red light I could see very clearly that the second floor one was closed at the time it, it, when the problem was happening it wasn't obvious to me how to tell if that damper was open or closed um, later I found out that kind of around the right side of it on the back which at this angle you can't see um, or really feel until you climb up in there pretty pretty deep. Um, but I, I couldn't tell if it was open. I mean, clearly it was closed because my my air handler was blowing air, and neither floor, the, the third floor, was getting no air. The second floor was getting some cold air, but not much, and it was actually not even calling for air on the second floor. So it told me that both of these were closed, um, while the the third floor, that one, should be open. Um, and which was so clearly that was my problem. This damper's closed when it should be open, and, and and that was also obvious because of the cold air up in this this uh, closet space where this air handler is blowing. So with that problem identified, I uh, got a picture of the the top of the actuator where I could see the actual part number and everything, and uh, did some research online and found another YouTube video. I've linked down linked to it down in the comments. And it walks through how to fix this model of, uh, of damper actuator. In that video, he, he actually describes how the actuator is powered 
uh, to, to the closed position and there's a spring that moves it to an open position when the power stops, when, when you uh, no longer generate power to it. Um, so that video actually walks you through how to fix a problem with the gears um, that are used to close it and those gears can strip and prevent the damper from going to the closed position. My problem is really the other way around. My problem is that the damper is not opening as it should. So logically my problem could be really one of two things. Either that panel is falsely sending power to the damper actuator which would keep it in a closed position when it's supposed to be open. Or more likely than that is uh, when the power supply is stopped that spring is not working to actually open up the damper. So I took the cover off and took a close look at the actuator from a side angle and found that the spring was really rubbing the gears so I felt pretty confident that the spring was messed up. It, it just didn't look right to me. It looked like it was sticking on occasion uh, when I actually did some tests. Um, you can see it kind of drags on it. Uh, the, the spring, uh, the gears are dragging on the edge of the spring but for, for whatever reason when I cycled through the test on that panel it would unstick and fix that problem for a bit only to later get stuck again. So it's it's like when it first uh, calls to calls to open it and cut, kills the power going to this actuator, uh, the spring just wasn't strong enough to, to get it open, it would sometimes stick. So once I figured all this out, the next time I had that problem of it sticking, I climbed up in here uh, and actually reached around uh, to the back of this thing and just put some downward pressure on that lever. And that was enough to get it unstuck and the spring took it all the way down. Uh, opening the damper all the way. So at that point I know for sure what the problem is. I have a bad spring in the damper actuator. Um, all of that diagnostic was the hard part. Fixing it's actually the easy part. So I went on Amazon and searched for Honeywell damper actuator and the part number which mine was M847D1004. Um, that returned a result for the replacement part, which was uh, actually M847D1012. Uh, but it was clearly identified as being a replacement for mine. It was about 75 bucks on Amazon Prime, came within two days. And I also saw it on, on eBay for a couple of different models for uh, between 90 and 100 bucks. So first things first, I've shut off the power to the entire HVAC, uh, killed the circuit breaker and disconnected those wires uh, leading directly into the actuator. Um, that's the old one, so let's remove that. You can see um, in my hand is the new one. And if you effectively over on the side, on the back, that's how you're going to remove it with a uh, 3 16 hex head tool and just unscrew that, uh, that, that lever there. So with that loosened up, we can literally just slide this right off. Take the old one off and we'll pop the cover off of the front of this and take a look at both the old one and the new one side by side. Now you can see, you got them side by side effectively in the same angle. The old one, you can see what the spring's doing there. It's actually effectively come loose and it's actually leaning up against or, or uh, rubbing against the gear, the gear piece. So that's what was really causing my issue. Sometimes it worked fine, the spring would actually uh, open it up and sometimes it wouldn't but it seemed to get caught and when it would get caught if I could give it a little pressure the spring would would uh, give it enough pressure to actually go ahead and open up but a lot of times I had to give it some pressure. So the new one same angle you can see how tight the spring is um, effectively against itself and it's not creating any friction against that gear motor. So now we will slide the new one on and reach down there to the bottom and just kind of hand tighten that lever and then get the uh, hex head wrench and tighten that down. Okay, so we get that nice and tight and now we'll just reconnect the wires. Okay, we are completely reconnected with the new one. We'll uh, pop the power back on and go test some things out, make sure it's working. Okay, so we're going to test it out. We've got power back. Um, down there you can actually see my Zone 1 damper. What we've just replaced is actually our Zone 2 damper. Um, zone 1 damper actually has a green light and it's much easier to see when it's open and closed. But we're going to just at least cycle through that test as well. I'm going to flip it around and down, way down there, 
is uh, Nana, and she's going to be working on the circuit board running through the test, cycling through the test. So for zone one, go ahead and, uh, and hit do next, move it to closed. And what we're going to see is you see the green light go off, and you see this little horseshoe. I, I describe it as a horseshoe with a couple of uh, bolts on the end there. And you can see it moving clockwise. We're going to let it go most of the way. And effectively, down there on the circuit board, she's just moving back and forth from test, open to close. So you can see it's all, all the way closed now. Okay, move it back to open. So you'll see it now going counterclockwise. When it gets complete, it'll uh, settle back in on the green light there. The green light will come back on. So that's my zone one, which is for me my second floor. Zone two is the third floor that we've been having the problem with. And not sure how well we'll be able to see it, but at least I'm going to reach around and uh, grab hold of that bolt and just to make sure that it's moving. So right now it is uh, it is in the down position, which is open. Okay, so for zone two, go ahead and close it. I can feel it moving. I'm just going to slide that back there. Hopefully you can see it. feels like it's all the way closed. Okay, go ahead and open it again. And obviously, hopefully you can see that, but obviously I can I can hear the spring moving the gear shift and, and opening it again. Okay, move it back to close, please. I can feel it. Hopefully you can see it, but it's very slowly moving up to the closed position. Okay, move it back to open, please. And obviously that spring's working well. I can, I can hear it, and I certainly feel it going back down. Okay, thank you. You can go ahead and finish, finish cycling through it. So it looks like we're back in business.